Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bitter Rivals podcast. Today is February the 13th, also known as Super Bowl Sunday. And we have a lot to talk about. A little bit of turmoil in Leafland. The Montreal Canadiens are the worst team in NHL history. Rob Marshank got suspended for six games. Uh, yeah, lots to get to today. So, as always, we'll start it out with some Maple Leafs conversations. A uh, little bit of turmoil in Leafland this week. Um, so... Uh, we lost Calgary. We played the we played earlier in the week too, though, eh? Uh, probably. Yeah, I think we. I forget what we who we played early in the week. One second. Uh, I do know we lost to Calgary, and it was pretty much the four goals on six shots on Jack Campbell that kind of uh, blew that game. That's that's right. We beat the Hurricanes in overtime okay. on Monday. Okay. Yeah, I'm remembering it now. So. We had a big game against the Hurricanes and beat them, which was nice. Fans were happy. Everybody's like, oh, look at this. We're we're beating good playoff teams. And then we lost to Calgary, and Leafs fans lost their fucking minds for no reason at all. We actually outplayed Calgary, um, in my opinion. Four goals on six shots did not help Jack Campbell. um, And Markstrom had a game. Markstrom played really, really well, and he's a very, very good goaltender. So you're gonna yeah, expect you, you, that. You, you you mix that with giving up four goals on six shots, and you're not you're not gonna get you're not gonna get over that. You know what I mean? No. You're not gonna win a game when you have Markstrom in the other net and you're allowing four goals on six shots. As much as we love Jack Campbell in Toronto, which we do, we Soup is an all star. We love him, but well, he can have a bad game. It's, he can. You know. Well, he, his past like seven starts. I think he's got five games where he's let in five. Ooh, that's not good. That is not good. Uh, after his very hot start, Vesna caliber start, he's yeah. really cooled off. And right now, I'll bet you all those fans who are going, oh, trade Peter Morazic, we're good, we're good. Guess what? We're not. And it's a very good thing we still have Peter Morazic. Very, very good thing. Uh, who, who, so, would be, yes, who would be your third if, if Morazic had went? Hutchinson? Rick Wool. Oh. Justin. Or no, not Justin. What's his name? I forget his name. Wool, though. I his last know. name is Wool. W O L L. Joseph. Joseph Wool. That's what it is. Uh, anyway, that, that would be number three. He just signed actually a uh, three year entry level contract. So that is kind of shoring up the third string. Rather have him in net than uh, Hutchinson. So yeah. that's, uh, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so moving on to last night's game, which was against the Vancouver Canucks, and guess what happened? Thatcher Demko had a fucking game. <laughs> Again, we got gold. For the second time this week, we got gold. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really good game. Leafs, I, I, I think that was the most saves ever made in a game by a Vancouver Canucks goaltender, beat Roberto Luongo. Yeah, because he was uh, up in the 50s, was he not? Yes. Yeah, I think we had, I think he tied him at 50 shots. I don't remember what it ended at, but the record stood at 50 saves, and Demko went above and beyond that. So, again, we got goalied. And we're not talking, like, outside, outside the circles, like, shots yeah. from the boards. Like, we're talking good scoring opportunities here. And Demko played great. And not that Mrazek had a bad game, but Demko outplayed Mrazek. And that's what happened. That's how it went. Um, and you're not going to win them all. You'd like to win them all, but you're not going to win them all. And I think that it's really important that Leafs fans try to remain a little bit even keeled through this because we get really, really high and then we get really, really, really low. Yeah, there's, and, there's no in between. See, but I am in between. Like right you're now, you're not like, though. You're not. Yes, though. I am. I you're am like so- you're, you're like you're like pretty tapered off, but you're still like pretty volatile. You're not you're not the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, but you're you're still like you're so still in the there. middle. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I said. No, 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 but you, no, you don't go too you don't go too crazy. But you're not like you're not even keeled. You're not. You're not. Okay. <laughs> sure, but uh, anyway. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, it is what it is, and we're not going to win them all, but you just want to bounce back this week. That's all you can really ask for, and uh, I'd like to think that Keith is going to give Morazic the start tomorrow night, 
I'd like to see that. I think that's what I'd prefer. Who do you guys I think have this week? I think it's time to give uh, Jack Campbell a night off. I don't remember who we have this week, but I do know that we um, play tomorrow. So we play in Seattle tomorrow. That's right. So I would give Peter Morazic that start, and then we're back at home Thursday. Penguins are in town, and then we're uh, still at home on Saturday when the Blues are in town. Followed by a Monday, February 21st game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. Yep. So that'll be an interesting one to speak on uh, next Sunday, but not this not Sunday. Even, well, I mean, I mean, technically it'll be the Sunday after that because the game's on a Monday. So we, we'll hype it up next week and then we'll deal with the fallout the week after. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll talk about, yeah. we'll, we'll be yeah. talking a lot about that on next Sunday. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Uh, we... I, I would like to see us sweep those games, those three games. The hard one, I would say, is against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looks really good. St. Louis is good, but I think we can definitely beat them. And I'll wait until after to tell you how bad Montreal is. So. <laughs> we should win that game, though. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's about all I got on the Leafs side of things. If you wanted to uh, get your Montreal side of things going... Talk about yeah. what uh, what things happened. Then I want to take a few minutes to um, address the state of the Montreal Canadiens myself personally. So you go. Yeah. So uh, week started off not not great. Uh, Monday night loss seven one to New Jersey. Um, I so we'll start with with because the issue right now is the goal has been the goaltending and the defense. And I love Caden Primo. He's not ready for the NHL. We've known that for. Before the season started, we know we knew it last season that he should not be playing. I think he's on like ten or eleven games this season. Like that, that is just should never have happened to begin with. Um, Sam Montembeau has been playing hurt for the last two weeks. He's supposed to go for wrist surgery, but we literally don't have another goalie, so he's been our backup and been playing. He's actually playing t- this afternoon. Um, yeah, it was just it was just bad. It was just just bad. Yeah, so uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, the Habs fired Dominic Ducharme to the surprise of absolutely nobody. Uh, yeah. Mercy. On At that point, that yeah, that's what it was. I mean, like, yeah. like we could have kept him on. I don't think it makes a difference to this season at all. Um, but in, you know, in the same way as firing Bergevin in November, like, if we're going to get this, you know, the new management, they're going to bring a new coach in, like, might as well just get this fucking couple months head start of, you know, actively looking for him. Um, and he was replaced by uh, Tampa Bay Lightning legend Marty, Martin St. Louis. Um, odd one. Odd one for sure. Um, but okay. So at time can I say high, something really funny? Like, can I just say something real quick? Yeah. I actually, when I saw him behind the bench for the first time, started cackling because of how short he is. Oh yeah, he's yeah, but you see his fucking quads, <laughs> dude. I was cat like I, when I was watching that game last night, and they called that like with six seconds left, they call a timeout because you're gonna draw up a play to score in six. Yeah, whatever. With the month, don't even get me started. What, 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 like, what do you want him to do? Just be like, okay, like fuck it, boys, six seconds. I'm ahead to the locker room. Like, no, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty no, much. You that's fl- what you you, you 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 gotta like, you gotta just you have to send it. You have to. You can't not send it. Anyway, when they cut to him on the bench, I started laughing my ass off because he can't be taller than 5'2". He's like, what, 5'7", I thought? Probably like 5'6", or 7", but like he looked like he was 5'2", like and I was oh, yeah. crying. I, there's no way this guy's an NHL coach. Anyway, go ahead, um, continue. But anyways, uh, yeah, so at the time of the hire, we had 37 games left. Um, so I don't, I don't think there's... like, And this is just my, my opinion here, is that, you know, you're, we're not turning the season around. We're not, you know, nothing Nothing positive is coming from this season other than Shane Wright, hopefully. Um, so, like, fuck it, why not try something? Because worst case scenario, if the Martin St. Louis experiment fails, oh, well, he coached 37 games, like, in a dead season. Like, what's, what's the worst he could do, right? Like, the worst we could do is we still finish last. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, like, we always kind of complain about how it's just like a, a, a carousel for coaching where a guy gets fired and then, you know, they just bring in the next guy that just got fired. 
So it was kind of refreshing to see someone like brand new brought into the equation, which is nice. I agree with that, yeah. Um, that's what I like about Sheldon Keith, actually. Yeah, and that's no. We're starting. We're starting to see it a little more. Um, teams. I don't want to call it outside the box because it's, it's still pretty in the box, but they're not going to the same fucking six guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Um, uh, go ahead. And then just uh, as per Darren, uh, this was a direct quote from Darren Dreger. St. Louis is an excellent communicator, fully engaged in analytics and a qualified teacher on a short term trial. This is a risk worth taking. And I, I agree with that 100 percent. Yeah, no, I just think it's like he has no connection to this, like to the Montreal Canadiens, like he never played for them. I, he the only connection he has is through Kent Hughes, where Marty St. Louis coached their kids together. Right. Yeah. So uh, Jeff Gordon from the outside the, looking, Jeff Gordon was in uh, in New York at the very end or, for the like, last Kent, little bit. Jeff Gordon. That's yeah, what yeah. I was talking about. Okay, OK, OK. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, sorry, my bad. No, but it's all good. To me, what it is, and why it's just hilarious and such a mediocre move, is he like Jeff Gordon just hired his buddy. To me, that's what happened. He just this guy's got no experience. He's never done this before. Said, "Hey, bud, want a job?" And to me, that is just extremely unprofessional, in my opinion. I, I think that this was a bad I mean hire. To be honest with you, I think that especially for an original six team, it's embarrassing in my opinion. I, I, I completely disagree with you on that end. Because um, so let's let's start with they're not, you know, this is he's literally just until the end of the season. That's his contract, whatever it is, three, four months. OK, so there's no yeah. long term commitment here. It's not, hey, like, here's a fucking four year deal. Like, let's go. Um, we're not we were never going to bring in, uh, you know, our coach for next year in this in this phase right now like we're just bringing in someone to you know to steer the fucking shipwreck like that's that's all we're doing right now is somebody just get the shipwreck to the fucking end of the 82 games and you know yeah so and like uh, why like why just mediocre why, why is it uh, mediocre i can understand but like uh it's just mediocre it's it's funny to me. I, to, I find it hilarious. To, 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 to be to honest call it with you, professional to bring in you know one of the most decorated players in like recent NHL history. Players, players. There's your key word. Player, yeah, not yeah. coach, not coach. Okay, but how you know you got to give these guys a chance. Like, yeah, you give them a chance in lower ranks. Coach AHL teams, coach junior teams, coach. You you don't just get a job coaching for the Montreal Canadiens because your buddy, you coach his kid. Like, come on, man. Seriously? But, like, for 37 games, does it make a difference, Abe? No. When it's an original I'm... six franchise, it should. The fucking... Can I start uh... now? Can I go? Oh, no, no, Because no, I'm going to keep it on Marty St. Louis, because I'm fucking... Okay, I'm not that I... I don't, I don't think he's going to get the job past the year. I think he's going to play... Coach his 37 games, or 34, or whatever's left now. And I think he'll end up somewhere in the organization, not as a head coach. Um, but you got to realize that, like, Martin St. Louis made a playing career out of proving people wrong, of people being of being told by people, you know, you're not going to make it, you're not going to be any good, you're not going to do it, and he kind of did it all. Stanley Cup champion, Olympic gold, fucking countless individual I'm not trophies. Not knocking Marty St. Louis's playing ability, absolutely. No, no, no. I, he was, but that, he was a great it's not, player. It's, it's not just playing. But that's that's the mentality. Is people are going to sit here and tell him, oh, you know. It's disrespectful. It's you know, it's embarrassing that you just got hired by your buddy. Like, and he's gonna he's going to prove you wrong. That's that is what he is as a as a human being. He proves people wrong. Well, they haven't won since he's been coaching. So, no, I but I, I know I, I I know you don't watch the games because I don't watch these games. I know you don't watch Habs games. There's like a there's a noticeable difference in the way we are playing. And you know, uh, so after the first game, because this first game. So it was Wednesday night he got hired, or Wednesday afternoon. Uh, he coached Thursday. He he did not get on the ice with the team before this game uh, against Washington. Uh, so we lost 5-2. It was 4-2 with an empty netter. We played pretty well. We got let down by poor goaltending again. Caden Primo just hung out to dry. Uh, he's finally actually, we picked up uh, Andrew Hammond uh, in a trade yesterday. So Primo finally got sent back down to Laval. Thank God. Like, um, but like, we played 
half well. We fucking and for any year, remember, he literally didn't have a practice session. He literally he talked to the team in the morning for about 10 minutes, went and did media, and then was behind the bench. Like he did not get a chance. Then uh yesterday afternoon uh against Columbus, the two one loss. Again, like we're just playing noticeably better. And even in the Washington game, I'm just gonna go back to it. We went down three nothing in the second period. You know it's Columbus, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just okay. Did I say the wrong team? No, 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 no. It just you're playing well against Columbus. Yeah. Not a good hockey team. Well, neither are we, so I mean we're fucking comparing with a similar team. Yeah, no, but anyways. I know, but... Anyways, uh, in the Washington game, we went down 3 in nothing in the second. And it was one of those things, under Ducharme, that turns into a 7 or 8. And it didn't. We pulled back 2, and then they got an empty nutter. Um, so you're seeing, there's, you're seeing something, you know. Like, we're not just rolling over and dying, which is nice. Well, you uh, know how you said I don't watch Habs games? Yeah. I actually did watch the one yesterday. And if that's improvement, <laughs> God. Your your defense delivers more pizza than Domino's. Your goaltending, you you actually had a good goaltending game yesterday. Sam Altenbo yeah. played unreal. Yeah. And you still hung him out. You still lost. Still hung out to dry. Yeah. I just the Montreal yeah. Canadiens are currently. So yeah, can you not Ave, 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 start your rant because I know how I know my response to your rant and I know you're not going to like it, but it's reality. So go ahead. Injuries. Yeah. Nine hey. game slide. Nine game slide. Eight games overall won through, what are we at now? How many games have they played? Uh, 40 something odd. 40 something and you have under 10 wins. Literally on pace to be the worst team in NHL history. When we're talk, when we talk about bad teams, right? Like, let's just go talk about the uh, 20. 14, 15, or maybe it was 15, 16, whatever it was, the year before we got Austin Matthews. Let's talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs that year. Not a good hockey team. Very, very bad hockey team, to tell you the truth. Still put up more than eight wins through 40, whatever it is, games. Let's talk about the Arizona Coyotes this year, who are literally trying to lose. Still a better hockey team than the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. Uh, they're literally in the entire... like. The goaltending is horrific. Jeff Petrie is, like, maybe the worst defenseman I've ever seen right now. Like, the way he is playing, he actually makes better passes up the middle to the opposing team than he does to his own team. And I know you're going to say Carey Price isn't there. You knew that before the season. Should have dealt with it then. Okay. This is a management team building problem. Bergevin? who you sang his praises, you love that guy. Yeah, so Dumbass. Built the worst team in the NHL. Worst just, team. The you're worst. Just incorrect. Incorrect. That is just factually incorrect. Okay. Correct me then. Fact Be, because, me. because the team he built had Carey Price and Shea Weber and Joel Edmondson, Brendan Gallagher, Paul Byron, and all these guys who did not play. Who have not played the season. Ga uh, Byron only just got back in over the weekend. Gallagher's only got fucking like 15 games. Price Injuries Weber, happen, man. Injuries happen. Okay. But when you lose you knew your Shea number... Weber wasn't going to play ever again when... before the season even started. You should have shored that up then. We did. We brought in David Svart. He's been dog shit. What the fuck? Like, team but at build the time, is horrible. But what, That's when, what I'm when, when, you. But when we brought... When, 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 what, David Svart? When we brought in what? David Svart. And Bergevin's you he had literal, that is? Bergevin ha his literal quote was we cannot physically replace Shea Weber, so it's going to be a team effort, but we still need to bring in a guy. The guy is David Savard, who fucking went for a first round pick and a second round pick at the deadline to Tampa. Like he like this wasn't where you fucking grabbed some random guy from the KHL and brought him in, but we did that with Weidman. Um but we brought in a guy who had value, who was supposed to be good, and he just fucking decided to take a season off. He's been fucking dog shit. Your like I've like, taken a season off. The whole team has taken the season off. Just because guys get injured doesn't mean the rest of the team has okay. an excuse to suck. Okay, but signing hey, Nick like, Suzuki to that contract is one of the worst decisions in NHL history. It's literally like, it's not at all, Ave. It's just not at all. And I just cannot wait for in the next fucking eight years when that deal kicks in next year. You are going to I'm gonna fucking bring back this clip every goddamn time he lights you guys up. 
every goddamn time I'm going to bring this clip back. So this man is a minus 21 and has 28 points in 47 games, and that is your number one center. Yeah, absolutely. And he's what, 21, 22? 22, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm taking that. Okay, now let's go look at the three. Let's go look at Nylander at 22, Marner at 22, and Matthews at 22. I've never and said he was... the contracts at the time. Okay, but con- you can go contracts for fucking anyone. If that literally means nothing. That's what we're talking about. We're literally talking about Nick Suzuki's contract. Okay, but like you can compare it to fucking whoever you want. Guys bloom early, guys bloom late. Like you can you can fucking pick and choose the contracts that make your argument look good. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think my point is you can look at pretty much any contract in the league, any reasonable contract in the league. Like, obviously, there are some that aren't good. We know that there are bad contracts in the NHL. Louis Erickson, Oliver ekman Larson. these are bad contracts. Nick Suzuki is another one of those bad contracts. That's it's what I'm trying not, to tell you. It's yes, just it not, though. It's okay. just not. Well, like, watch a Habs game and watch the Results speak play. for themselves, and you guys are on a nine-game slide and have won eight games. Okay. If would the Leafs be in the position they're in if Jack Campbell, Morgan Riley, and Jake Muzzin hadn't played a game this season? Yes or yes. no? They, yes. Yes. Really? Yes, because really? we still have Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, Peter Morazic. Jake Muzzin hasn't played well. We still have TJ Brody. Still have Rasmus Sandin. Yeah, no, we would still maybe we wouldn't be like the third best team in the league, but we'd still be a top ten team. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's Absolutely. just not. No. Yeah, trust me. No. But, like, yeah. you, you sit you sit and bitch about the Habs and fucking, like, all of our issues yeah, are... Needs to be brought, like, this is an like, embarrassing year for them. This is yeah, embarrassing. No, nobody's arguing with you, Abe. That's the whole thing, is nobody's arguing with you. It's just when we say, look, our issues have been defense and goaltending because we're missing our best defenders and goalkeepers, and then you say that's that's not the issue. But it, it is. It is. Like, watch the games. That's That's been the issue. Yeah, Caden no, Primo, you, Caden Primo should have been whole... nowhere near. Caden Primo should have been nowhere near the net this year, but he has to be because we have fucking four injured goalies. Like, again, these things happen, right? You can't yeah. blame the entire season on it. This is like you, you, what, you, what you kind of can though when you look at what has happened this season, and it's we get blown out because our defense and goaltending are bad. Why are our defense and goaltending bad? Because everyone's hurt. Like that's. You're not putting the three together. You're just you're picking and you're just saying, no, you, you can't blame injuries on it. You absolutely can. It's just no, reality. Because it, it, that's not an excuse just, for the rest of the team to play like shit. It just isn't. But it, it's it's because it's trickled down. Our, we get bad goaltending, which means we're starting fucking, you know, like we're giving up fucking six, seven goals a game. Um, our defense have struggled fucking completely in our defensive zone. Like, I know you don't watch games, but we sit in our defensive zone and we can't get the puck out. We can't clear it. We're slow moving the puck out, which means we're not getting out up the ice, which yeah. means our forwards don't have a chance to do anything. So, yes, that all starts when you're fucking back here, because if you can't get out of your defensive zone, you can't attack. So when when I'm saying we have defense defensive issues, our defenders are not good. They're not getting the puck out. They're not you know, doing their job. That affects the forwards. Like that's that's how this whole thing works. But if you fo- if you fix, you know, the goaltending, and you fix the defense, you get guys healthy, bring them back into the lineup, or fucking Hughes and uh, Gordon haven't tr- traded for anyone yet other than Hammond. But yeah, you bring guys in, and then, you know, the, it moves up the ice, and then you see, okay, now let's see if we've got issues here up as a forward group. But when you're when you're starting on a fucking shit base, like, it's not even that we're fucking, like, there is no base. Like, you, you're never going to get anything. If you had told me at the beginning of the season, before we fucking dropped the puck, that Caden Primo was going to have, like, almost 15 games this season, I'd be like, oh, fuck, we're fucked. Like, I would have told you that. But, like, I think of that, and I think of even the Leafs, before we picked up Campbell, Hutchinson was playing. And Hutchinson is not an NHL goaltender either. Still won games, still made the playoffs. Yes, but did you have the fucking the rest of your decor healthy and around him to to kind of make didn't up have for that? Wasn't yet. We didn't. Uh, we had Nikita Zaitsev on the blue line. We had like Cody CC, Tyson Berry. Yeah, yeah. No, the defense wasn't good either. We still made the playoffs. Okay, we're talking like we've been playing with like three AHL demon a game for like six months. 
Like, like that's the level that we are at. Like and Corey again, Shoot, that's something Corey, that Corey they should Shoot. have thought about before the season started. Okay, like, but we nobody, no GM sits down and goes, "Okay, what happens if six defensemen get hurt? Do we have fucking six guys that can play?" Like, that's not a normal conversation. For us, like right now, the Canadians have Shea Weber, uh, Ben Schrott just as of this morning is on IR, uh, Joel Edmondson, David Savard, all hurt. So, like, that, that, that's a top four gone. Yeah, that's like, like you know what I mean. That's tough, but yeah, like, like no, no team plans for having their top four defensemen out. That's I understand not... that, but all I'm saying is you can't just say the only reason that we have only won eight games is because of injuries. It's because the team has not done yes, anything. Yes, but, but but why have we not done anything? It's because of the injuries. That's the thing you're not putting together. That's like it's just it's not connecting in your head. That's because. Just because you're hurt doesn't mean the rest of the team has an excuse to play that bad. I've said it five times now. No, Those I'm guys, not, right. Those guys, I'm not, obviously, they're hurt I, even when they I, come back. They're not expected I'm, to be what they were before. I understand I that. Not, but the rest am, of the team is, is not hurt. I am not. The yeah, just but the rest, of the, the rest of the team is AHL players, Abe. That's the thing you're not understanding. We're playing with fucking seven AHL forwards and four AHL defensemen from like mid-November to like the end of Jan- to beginning of January. Okay, what's Nick Suzuki's <laughs> excuse? He's still fucking putting up some points. He's still when you and again He's you don't got I nine know, goals. I, I know you don't watch games, but like the game against Colorado, the games against Dallas when we're winning, he's driving the offense. Everything we do goes through him. Everything. But when he's playing with a fucking AHL winger because everyone's hurt, you can't fucking expect him. And I don't expect him as a twenty two year old to just fucking put the team on his shoulder and fucking no. I don't expect him to put up four goals a game to make up for Cade and Primo giving up four fucking weak goals. No. Like. Agree to disagree. I mean, like, if you want, but it's just, it's just you fucking burying your head in your ass because you're a Leafs fan. Wow. I just, uh, sorry, I can't hear you from the top of the standings. Uh, that's great, Abe, because I don't give a fuck. But uh, when you know, like when you look down, you only see shitheads. When you look up, you only see assholes. Yeah, I got, <laughs> I got the yeah, best zero, point percentage you, in the league. I was like, you, my you, ears. Yeah, you you almost did the Patrick Roy cups thing, but you cannot do that. I got I got top point percentage in league plugging my ears. I got Shane Wright coming, bud. And so probably Connor save. Bedard. No, no. Shane Wright can't save this team, man. <laughs> no, but I'd rather fucking... I'd rather rebuild with him than without him. Anyway, we got a lot of other stuff to get to, so we'll yeah. leave it at that. Uh, well, so, uh, let, let, let's let's go to fill in the blanks. Let's go to fill in the blanks. Okay. We'll um, go to fill in the blanks. Then we have the Marshan thing, and uh, we also have Cami Granado to talk about. Yeah. Um, so fill in the blank. Uh, so kind of on the Marty San Louis, you know topic uh what non-leaf player would you like to see coach the leafs like Mm -hmm. if if something were to happen and you know keith left and you need to bring in you know a martin st louis type guy who who you want Hmm, that is a good one want to know who i'd like to see jerome mcginla yeah that's a banger that's a banger of a show yeah that would be the guy (laughs) for me I mean, I, I can't answer because we, we literally got Marty San Louis. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, um, hit me with the next one. Yeah, Leafs fans had blank right to be upset about the loss to Calgary. None. <laughs> no right. Absolutely no right. <laughs> All because right. We won 24 of our last 27. Well, I think now it's 24 of our last 28 games, so... <laughs> Uh, Canada, so men and women, Canada has a blank percent chance of winning gold at the Olympics. Well, I think you gotta, like, you have to give Russia their props, the States their props. Uh, uh, on, the, on the men's side, yeah? Oh, yeah, on the men's side, I'm talking. Yeah, on the men's uh, side, so I, I'd give them about a 30% chance. I was I was feeling about, about like, 55, 60. It's, it's an open, it's a pretty open, uh, tournament but like I, I still back the boys to do it yeah no i and i think is still pretty high considering the amount of high quality talent there is in that tournament yeah 
And the the thing that I always think about though is Russia just takes their KHL guys and they they lost to uh, Czechia yesterday in OT. Did they? Yeah. So mm. That's what I mean. Like it's an open tournament right now. And then on the women's side, on the women's 100. side, it's it's a hundred. It's a hundred and ten. Hundred percent chance. Like ninety nine because the states can do damage, but like I I just want to bring I just want to bring this up. So our quarterfinal against Switzerland, we won eleven nothing. Artendi only made 11 saves for the shutout. Uh, Spooner, Natalie Spooner, currently leads the tournament with 11 points. Uh, Sarah Fillier and um, I forget Jenner's first name, Brianne Jenner, uh, share the tournament lead with 11 goals. And then Poulain and Spooner share the tournament lead with 10 assists each. Jesus, we're so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so we're so good. good. <laughs> I, like, oh I, know, I know the Americans are very good, but like they're not, a, they're not even at that level yet. No, like they're, they're not. Just not. We're gonna we're gonna beat them this year for sure. Like, we gotta crush them. Yeah, and I'm not I, I'm not gonna give it any more airtime than this. Idiots who keep saying that the women's hockey doesn't belong in the Olympics, like actually, fuck off. Like, honestly, <laughs> like just that's just such a bad opinion. Like, like, and I know, I know it's an opinion, and they can't be wrong. But that's a, that's a wrong opinion. That, that is just that, that, yeah. That's just wrong. Everybody's entitled to your opinion, but yours is wrong. Yeah, like <laughs> straight up. Yeah. Um. Uh, on the broadcast, fuck, was it Friday night? They were talking about uh, the Olympic panel. It was. Uh, I know. I forget who the other two people were. On. PJ Stock was one of them, and they were talking about you know that article, and I think it was the Toronto Star. Yeah, um, they're saying like you know, all these other sports that other countries dominate, and all these other like different things. Like, you don't sit there after fucking Jamaica destroys everyone in sprinting in the Summer Olympics. You don't go fucking take sprinting out. The Jamaicans just win everything. It's like no, fucking invest in your program. Get fucking get you know, better. Train, yeah, train your people better. You know, bring better athletes. And you're seeing that in the women's hockey now. Like it's growing. It's I think this, there's still a massive gap between. Canada, the U.S., and everyone else, but like the the everyone else is getting better, and it's yeah. not going to be fucking next Olympics or maybe not even the Olympics after that. But it's going to get to a point where it's not eleven nothing quarterfinal wins every, oh, anymore. And also, these reporters do some research, like do some history research, <laughs> because go look at the first like eight yeah. Olympics. Canada just murdered everybody. I think the first Olympics, we literally like. I think we were a hundred and like we outscored our opponents one hundred and twenty to three. Yeah, in the and it's first all, that's, ever Olympics. And I think so, you only play like what six games in an Olympics if you play everyone. <laughs> like so, how like and now look at men's hockey in the Olympics. That's how the sport grows. Yeah, that is literally the only way to do that to grow the sport is to play the sport and and to invest in your program and to send your country to the Olympics. Yeah. Like that's or, I mean, how, it to, works. To how are they ever going to grow if they, if they just take them out of the Olympics? Yeah, like I look at anyway. I look at countries like Germany and Switzerland on the on the men's side. You know where were they fucking like ten fifteen years ago in like in, in the grand scale scheme of fucking men's hockey? They were yeah, fucking exactly. You know they were they were like you know you had like Marcel Gotch and like Olaf Kolzig. Like you know you had your one fucking token. Yeah, now look at the Germans in the NHL. Mo Sider is one of the best young defensemen in the league. I mean, Timmy Leon, Stutzla, great Leon Dreisaitl, like, yeah, like, Dreisaitl. And, like, even their their team now with no NHLers is doing not terrible. No. Like, they're, they they're competing. The DEL is a good yeah. European league. Like, yeah. Like, that, then, like, this is how the process has... This, oh, it's, not, well, it's not how the process works. Like, that's, you know, invest money, invest in the program, invest in your players. You get better results. And it's not going to be overnight. You know, nope. yeah. Anyways, so speaking women's Olympic hockey, uh, we gotta talk about the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, actually uh, made a really good hire, hiring Cami Granado, uh, stealing her from the Seattle Kraken, actually, where she was in a scout. Uh, she lives in Vancouver, so she was obviously very happy to take the position as the assistant general manager of the Vancouver Canucks, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, like just She's a great like, hockey. Player. She's a savant. Her and her husband Ray are two of my like two of the best people in hockey, to be honest with yeah. you. Ray Ferraro and Cami Granado are the ultimate hockey power couple. And to be honest with you, I'm I'm really, uh, like, as much as I fucking hate the Vancouver Canucks and all their fans, much respect for that hire. Much respect. Oh, like, 
like we were talking about fucking like Jerome McGinley being a banger of a hire, like as a thing, like Cameron Granado is a legit banger of a hire for the Canucks. Like, yeah, yeah, because she like, knows what she's up. talking about, man. <laughs> like that's yeah, very uh, very good move by uh, it's Rutherford that's there now, eh? Yeah, very good move yeah. by Rutherford. Very very well, good, and um, I think they also also their uh, their actual GM I think is like European. Like I don't even think he's North American. So they're actually being they're making some big progressive strides over there in uh, in Vancouver. So good for them. Props to them. Uh, I forget the position they filled a few maybe maybe about a month ago. Yeah, Emily um, Casting Gay. Yeah, that one. I forget I what her, the position is, but they have her in there. They also have Rachel uh, Dury, who's an analytics wizard wizard anyways back to the cast and gay uh hire I, a lot of people were upset because they thought cammy granada was going to get that and yeah. so now for her to you know be brought into the organization as this is assistant gm is fucking great yeah love to see it love to see it so we'll uh do a little flip around here we talked about something really positive let's talk about an idiot brad marchand <laughs> six games wasn't enough for that I don't think no, so. No, six games was totally fair, but... I mean, I don't want to say... He didn't swing his stick at Jari's head, but, like... It was more of a fencing motion. Yeah, but, like, I still think, like, what, Chris Simon got, like, 30, 25 games or something okay, like that? Okay, but he baseball swung his stick like a psychopath at a guy's head. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, okay, I'm not... I'm, that's the thing. I'm not saying they're close, but I feel like that is a... It's, it's a little... Marchands is a little closer to 25 games than it was to six games. No, I would, I, I would disagree with that. I honestly was surprised when the league said that they were going to give him an in-person because that usually means they're going to go five plus. And I was actually very surprised by that because to be honest with you, what I saw was a, as much as it, it's a, he's a dick and we hate him. Yeah. It was a punch in the head, which ha- like, let me put it to you this way. Do you know how much more damage gets inflicted during a five-minute fighting major? Like, and that all you get is a five-minute fighting major? Do you know how much more damage gets oh, yeah. inflicted there? So you're telling me that was worth more than six games? So, I mean, to the fighting major thing is you have two willing combatants. Two guys who are saying, hey, like, I'm going to drop my gloves and fight, whatever. Not always. Um, Not uh, always. Mo- most of the time. Most of the time. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, like, and this is just, like, how I grew up was, like, you don't touch goalies. Like, if you touch my goalie, you fucking oh. get the shit kicked out of you. And that's why it was worth six games to me. Yeah. Because if yeah, that so- happens to a player, it's not six games. No, no. Like, he probably because gets- it was Jari and not Crosby. Yeah. If, if it's, it's another to- player, he probably gets maybe two for the high stick. Like, well, like, I don't think like he does two- the high stick if it's another player because they're nah, not masked. I- like, the only reason he did that is because there was he was masked. Yeah. That's why he did that. He, it wasn't, and it wasn't malicious. He wasn't trying to hurt him. He was just trying to drive. He was just trying to piss him off. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I think any more than six games would have been fucking ridiculous, to be honest with you. Like, I would have even been pissed off if he got more than six, even though it is Brad Marchand. Uh, interesting. Brad Marchand has lost $1.4 million due to suspensions. Could you imagine being such a dick? That you just give away one point four million dollars because you're such a dick. Okay, but like, remember when Ovi fucking speared that kid in the balls and got a twenty five grand fine? Yeah, and he was probably sitting there thinking, "Fuck, I could do, I could fucking spend twenty five grand slashing guys in the balls." Brad Marchand is probably the exact same. That same thought process of, "Fuck it." Twenty five thousand and one point four million are two very different figures. No, no, but like, okay, Brad Marchand can afford to lose 1.4 million. We're not talking about fucking like, you know, Michael Pizzetta fucking losing 1.4 <laughs> million in salary, right? Like we're talking about Brad yeah, Marchand. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I understand. I, I, he's got a lot of money. He probably donates yeah. that to charity. But anyway, I think he was fully deserving. He now holds the record for most uh, individual suspensions in NHL history at eight. Yeah. And like, uh, which you, it blows my mind that some guys didn't get more than eight suspensions. Like, when I think of, like, Matt Cook and Rafi Torres and Chris Simon, like, how the fuck did none of them get eight suspensions? Yeah, like, no, I, I totally agree with that. Chris Simon, but I think it's because they were suspended for so long that they didn't have an opportunity to get re-suspended. <laughs> I mean, with the Chris Simon one, absolutely. He's got, like, I think two of the three longest in NHL history. Um, yeah. But I look at a guy like Matt Cook, and you're telling me Matt Cook didn't get suspended eight times? 
Yeah, I know. Or like <laughs> Rafi Torres, that's a good shout too. Yeah, like like how did they not get suspended at least eight times? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Uh yeah. So that's uh that's some news from around the league. I don't think there's really much else happened, like crazy can, stuff around the league. Can we roast the Arizona Coyotes and their oh, um yeah. stadium situation? Yeah, we sure can. <laughs> you who thought the Montreal Canadiens were a joke? Hey, at least we're only a joke on the ice. At least, yeah. at least off the ice, we're we've got our shit together. The Arizona Coyotes are officially going to play in a five thousand seat stadium at the University of Arizona because they got kicked out of their old arena for not paying rent on time, not paying city taxes. And just simply not being able to fill the place. No. So, yeah, their their landlord, you could say, literally said, "We're gonna find something else that's gonna make us more money than you do." Yeah, Bye. because they could they could leave that building empty for forty one nights a year and not lose as much money as having the fucking Yotes play there. Yeah, so that's that was kind of hilarious when they officially announced that and they announced it like it was a positive thing. Yeah, I like thought it was like, hilarious. Like, there, there's going to be an NHL team playing in a 5,000-person fucking barn. Like, that so is... So, here's, here's the thing. Next year, the Super Bowl is in Arizona. This weekend. The Waste Management Open is in Phoenix. This weekend. And I'm sure the Yotes are going to be playing at the University of Arizona. <laughs> That's a weekend trip that I would be all in on. I would bet you money you could get those Arizona Coyotes tickets for under ten dollars. That's what I'm saying. It would be that would be the cheap part. I'm, I'm the Super Bowl yeah. is not a cheap thing. Yeah, and, obviously and, not. No, I I actually saw something. I think the cheapest Super Bowl tickets like ten grand. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I'm, right now, resale. I like. I'm not allowed to like make comments on paying a lot for tickets because I've spent a lot of money on a lot of tickets. But like yeah. even like the Habs playoff tickets, like, even the Cup final ones, they were not ten grand. I no. think I, I, I saw the cheapest ones were at, like, maybe two or three grand. Um, I mean, like, Champions League final tickets were not ten grand. Fucking, like, ten grand. Super, Super Bowl is something else, man. Yeah. Like, that's Super just... Super Bowl something else. I'm very excited for that today. Uh, did you want to get to prop bets, or did you want to just leave that out? Because you don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, I'll throw prop bets out. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw them out there. Okay, so... The over-under for the anthem length is set at 104.5 seconds. Are you taking the over or the under? I can go 104 seconds. That's just, that's like a minute and a half, right-ish? Minute 40 seconds? Minute 44 and a half seconds. Over. I'm taking the under. Over. She's gonna, she's gonna whoever's singing it's going to ham up the end when they get the fucking jets flying over and everything and fireworks because Merca. And yeah. Merca. Yeah, over. Yeah. Um, halftime show. Will Snoop Dogg censor himself? God, no. No way. <laughs> Not, Not a chance. chance. Not a chance. Okay, we can agree on that one. And, uh, we'll do one more. Coin toss. Heads or tails? The opening coin first. toss. I'll let you go first. I've been a heads guy my entire life. I always take heads. <laughs> tails. Okay, there it is. There's the prop bets for the Super Bowl. And now, who, who do you think is going to win? Bengals! Yeah. Uh, I, I gotta go Bengals just because uh, Gallagher and Suzuki are Bengals fans, so we gotta back them. Go Bengals. I'm so... Yeah. Good morning to everybody except the LA Rams. <laughs> anyway. Right, so, so yeah, uh, we're gonna get to uh, that. I got a golf tournament to watch coming up here. I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. Gatano, do you have... Uh, I'll just say, uh, what, do the Leafs, what do the Leafs have coming up this week? Uh, 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 so yes, we play tomorrow in Seattle, then the Penguins, then the Blues, uh, Penguins on Thursday in Toronto, and the Blues on Saturday in Toronto. All right. Yeah, so we've got the Sabres actually right now. The Habs are down one nothing with about five minutes left in the first. What a surprise. Uh, we got the Blues on Thursday and the Islanders on Sunday. Okay, so there so. you go, yeah. So we're both playing the Blues this week. Let's see how bad they beat you and how bad we beat them. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I just wanted to say before we finished here, you were a good sport today. 
I know. That's... I had to get my sh- some shit off my chest because I haven't had an opportunity to just go in on the Habs yet this year, and I needed to. I, I just needed to. <laughs> it, I, it was itching at me, man. Like, so I, I appreciate your uh, your good sportsmanship today because I, 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 I mean, like, that's kind of the point of the show. But I also know if the shoe was on the other foot that you would fucking sit, you'd sit and take it too. So you know, like, that's just yeah, and it will be. Trust me, eventually. Yeah, at, at some point. Yeah, I mean, exit in the first round again this year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah you know, and to be fair, yeah, you you took your you took your round one beatings uh, a couple months back, so yeah. So we're, we're I think we're even. Okay. Thanks to everybody for listening. Thank you yeah. to uh, T Gem for hosting and powering us, and uh, hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl tonight. Don't uh, forget to like, share, subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe, please, and thank you. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, everybody.